I was just saying it's it's evident that we're speaking to a parent because you haven't changed in Aya's name to so. <laughs> I am definitely controlling, and that goes beyond parenting. That's a cover up, Soha. That's a cover up. I can answer um, on his behalf. I think I know quite a lot how he thinks. Ah, uh, let's begin. Soha, so tell us what prompted you to write the book. The genesis of the idea for the story came from Kunal. who uh really doesn't enjoy reading so much so i love reading and i would read to anaya every night um and she sort of said okay two bedtime stories you'll read to me and then papa will tell me a story from his mouth so means he'll imagine a story and tell her and uh, often she would come up with the characters and she likes to be the hero of every story so it's central to her uh and um there's usually an animal because she's quite in love with animals So she said Ini and Bobo and that's how you know Kunal just made up the story of the top of his head and then we told it to her so many times she said maybe we should have a book um and instead of just one picture book for her birthday I then said let me contact Penguin I've worked with them in the past and perhaps we can actually author you know a children's book wow and the illustrations are fabulous they are lovely and uh, it did take us some time to find the right person because I think when you're writing a book which has your daughter um as the central character you know you really have a vision and we must have been very difficult to work with because we kept saying this is not how we see it this is not how we see it this is not how we imagine it's a little bit um pretty the book uh, yeah. and we wanted it to be visually appealing for children uh, so even the adoption center the colors the gardens uh, we may not see that so much in a city like mumbai but um, you know we dream of it okay um now here's here's what typically happens in most couples which is you're an avid reader Kunal is not, and and but you know you don't obviously he but the the but you're storytelling through different mediums, right? Like you said, he makes up stories. Then you guys are both in the cinemas, where which is a very visual way of storytelling. How is it that you teach Inaya to love books and the love for reading when when there is two different people at home doing learning and absorbing stories through different mediums? So it's interesting because in school right now they're learning the unit of inquiry is storytelling and the different mediums of storytelling through a painting through dance through music through um oral storytelling as well as reading of course and cinema uh and uh, one wants to expose her to all of that but as someone who has grown up not having access to as much um you know media as there is today uh, I do really believe in reading and the love of reading a, a book i think that it really teaches you a lot of things firstly discipline to sit down and open a book it's engaging and it's absorbing and it's independent uh so you can really never be bored if you enjoy reading um and i think that that's wonderful because a lot of children struggle with uh, what should we do now how do we pass the time especially during a pandemic or a lockdown whereas you know there's endless literature and i'm sure that we will all die before we read all the books that exist yeah. so yeah. you know if you love reading a that takes care of that i think it excites your imagination and your your creativity when you're watching something it's being fed to you um whatever is the story is it's the director's imagination the cinematographer's medium and you don't have to think whereas when you're reading a book you're engaged and your mind is constantly being utilized to imagine uh how and there's different ways that people will imagine it which is often why when people see the movie version they're disappointed because it's not how they imagined it right. so i think there's um, and of course how do you encourage a child to do anything you you know you you don't say you act because they will copy you so if you're going to say read a book and they're going to see you eating your lunch and watching tv which is often what we do as well then she's going to be like why should i read when i don't see you guys reading um right. whereas if they see you reading and uh, then i've really surrounded her with books her bedroom has a bookshelf her playroom has a bookshelf she watches uh me certainly read uh, and you know right where i am now there's a bookshelf so i think if you're naturally close to books and sometimes if you let the child be without constantly giving them something to do they might like this morning she went and picked up a book and she was you know practicing reading herself right um couples usually find it hard to work together You guys have written a book together. Tell me all about the fights, not about all the good parts. I do wish Kunal was here. He was supposed to be here, but he's in the south of France right now because obviously I'm going to take my own side. <laughs> but I'm feeling 
compelled to also defend him. I don't want to defend him, but because he's not here, I'm going to have to be come nicer. Come on, come on. Nobody would be. I I will interview him separately, but you have to tell me what was the thing that you guys most fought about. We are constantly. Um, we continue to differ as to whose contribution to this book has been more, <laughs> and uh, we will fight this battle to the death because uh, Kunal did think up the story, and he did narrate the entire story to Inaya. So where have I come in? I think I have come in with. writing out the story which is more than just secretarial work i've also given it um, a style of writing and i feel that you know writing is a lot about style you know you can tell a story in a number of different ways but sometimes you're drawn to particular authors because of their style of writing right. uh, you know i'm reading ruskin bond right now and he's written a lot of books for children uh, they're, very they're very simply told they're very simply told i just finished with him Yeah. Oh, with that's his birthday in a couple of days, and you know, we're all excited. So it's he's just written his memoirs for children, and they're so simply told. But his style is yeah. what is so appealing and relaxing. So you know, who you know when you co-author, especially you know, they've been kind enough to put my name first. But uh, you know, there are going to be many more books in this series. So now the challenge that he has thrown at me is that now you think up the idea for the third one, and you know, I'll write it out. Uh-huh. We're going to see how that goes. <laughs> right. No, but it's so interesting because you know, I I must tell you that you know I always read um, to my girls, and my husband always narrated uh, you know these random stories, which which I'm like, <laughs> you know, Nakul, these stories don't make any sense, and they had the most bizarre characters. And but I you know when I look back, I feel like those were the stories that my that my kids probably enjoyed the most. So yeah. Um, you know, I, I like how the dads, uh, the moms, always need to make sense of everything. Yeah, the dads don't need to make any sense, and they're still. Uh, yeah, we always feel the need that they must be learning everything. That you must be teaching them something in some form. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, as parents, we always try to overcompensate on a department that we are kind of slacking, right? So in this case, I'm assuming you are the avid reader. Kunal is not a reader, so I'm sure he's overcompensating on that department. What department do you slack and you try to overcompensate, and which and and how do you really do it? I um, but that doesn't what, come naturally to you. What doesn't come naturally to me is just relaxing. Uh, I am definitely controlling, and that goes beyond parenting. Um, you cannot. I do not want to be surprised in life ever. Uh, like, do not throw a surprise party for me. Let's not go on a. You know, whimsical trip to Paris because I can't do those things. That I really shakes my equilibrium, yeah. and I don't and enjoy that, that feeling. It defines the metabolism because yeah, so yeah, exactly. So it's a very sort of I'm there, um, and I'm working on that because I'm of a certain age and my daughter's of a certain age, and she's a different temperament to mine. And much as we think that, I genuinely believe that I'm the best influence in her life. Yeah. I genuinely believe that. Uh, I genuinely believe nobody will read to her as well as I will. That nobody will play with her as nicely as I do. That nobody will look after and put her to bed as well as I can. But I know that that's not true um, somewhere. Or I need to. I need to believe that it's not true. And I, what I'm working on is just letting other people contribute. Um, you know, and to do things in a way differently to the way that uh, I would. So whether it comes to food. I'm quite anal when it comes to discipline and like no sugar, no sugar, and um, I've let that. I've quite relaxed that. And I'm not overcompensating, but I'm allowing a certain amount of sugar in her life. Um, you know, screen time. I've I've understood the value of screen time, and I do see how moderation, screen time, and moderation can be useful. Um, and that certainly bedtime. I continue to be very, very strict about. I don't know something. It like becomes seven thirty, and something actually happens to me. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde, and I'm just like turn off the lights, turn off the lights, just go to bed. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think I'll ever be able to let go of that time. Okay, um, you know, and and this one's actually for Kunal, but you're going to answer on his behalf. From not being a reader to to marrying someone who's an avid reader, does he ever feel like you have an edge or over him on on certain things? And he's like, damn you, because you read, you know this. <laughs> or does it you are at an advantage but you know you understand now that reading is uh, is not the only way to get information 
Yeah. And uh, he's very well informed. So uh, for all the parents who say that I can't get my child to read or my child will just, you know, shut, out, shut the book as soon as I'm out of sight. What would you say to parents who really want to raise readers? Well, firstly, I would say introduce it from a young age. Because of course, at the age of four now, I mean, Inaya is four now, if I try and introduce something new to her, she is open to it because we've, you know, whether it comes to her diet or it comes to her activities, we've constantly introduced her to new things. So she's open to trying things. Um, but where any child will rebel is if you keep harping on about it. You know, you must read for half an hour every day. And because she's learning how to read herself now and blending words, I was very keen. Um, that she sits down for 15 minutes a day and reads a book. And it's because it's tedious and because it's challenging for her, she wouldn't want to do it. And I would say you have to do it. And then literally I've forgotten over the past couple of weeks because I've had a busy couple of weeks and I haven't said that to her. And as I, I was saying to you earlier today, uh, she in the morning went and picked up a book and said, I want to read this book. Um, so I think sometimes we're trying too hard and there will be naturally rebellious, like I would be too if you asked me to do something again and again. Um, but I think what helps is if you, from a young age, A, read to them and surround them with books within, as, as I said, um, grasping um, reach so that it's available to them as one thing. Yeah, and, and I completely feel like when you're saying there's no gender to reading, I feel like your mom did something right because both you and Seth are both avid readers, right? So, yeah. I did wish, what was the secret to that and how did she manage to do that given both of your readers? You know, we are all, a, we were all there were no mobile phones when we were growing up. Um, you know, we would get Chitrahar for a couple of hours in the day and there wasn't that much. There wasn't 24 hour kids television the way there is now. Now you can always find content, whereas yeah. we had to wait till 4 p.m. for there to be something that was appropriate for us to watch. I was told many times, don't bring your book to the dining table because this is a time for the family to converse. And yeah. I always had my head buried in the book. My brother naturally enjoys reading. You know, again, I think when you go off to college and school, we both studied things that were like I did history and he did history of art. And they're intensely, you know, research oriented. And, um, you know, as I said, so school reinforces what you teach at home and we just both enjoyed reading. We have so many parents writing back saying that, you know, one it is a screen free time and second is some children just learn better by listening versus reading. Uh, and today we look back over the last two years, our kids have not learned through textbooks. They're literally learning through audio visual. So would you be looking at more, um, more different or diverse forms of medium to communicate stories? Absolutely. In fact, we already listen to a lot of stories. Uh, in the audio form, um, also because it's exhausting to read. <laughs> you know, there are times when uh, I don't actually need to be the voice reading to her. All I'm doing is sitting there and reading to her for half an hour. Whereas if I can find something uh, that can read to her for half an hour, then that frees up my time. And of course, you have to find something that um, is appropriate and something that will engage them again. So often, um, you know, I have. Uh, she doesn't know how to operate it as at herself as yet, but um, you know we listen to a lot of podcasts, we listen to a lot of audio stories on uh, different uh, platforms, and she enjoys that. And I feel you know you're training another part of your mind to listen carefully, um, which is also a very important skill. Uh, often when we look at a book and a picture book, we're looking at the pictures. We may not be paying attention. We find ourselves as adults having to reread so many times. Um, but when you're listening. You have to really train yourself because, you know, you're, you're not aided by a visual medium. Um, and it, I think it's a very important um, facet of yours to develop as well. Right. And and Demi, if we were to dissect your brain, how many, like, what are the different compartments that would actually be there? Like, if you have to literally, like, meme yourself and your brain, like, what would be the words that would be popping up? I mean, I feel uh, there's a lot that I'm interested in and passionate about. Uh, certainly, I lost myself when I became a parent and it became, I had no other identity and it took me about two years to find my feet. Um, but I really enjoyed that and I think that's why I chose to become a parent when I was 38. Uh, because I was happy to really absorb myself and I'm very single-minded. I know women are meant to be multitaskers, but I'm not. I can do one thing well. I can also do one relationship well. Uh, so I was a very good wife and then I became a mother and I became a terrible wife because I can only do one thing. And, uh, you know, honestly, like 
um, and now I'm managing to achieve balance again because I'm not. It's no longer that new love, you know. I, I now in I was four and a half, and now I'm able to be a wife, be a daughter, be a sister, be a friend. I must have been a terrible friend um, for a while. I continue to struggle in that in that aspect. Uh, but these are things that are important to me. I, uh, literature, travel. Uh, most of my brain is taken up by the people that I love because I know that time is limited, and I'm terrified of you know losing, you know, and not having enough time. Um, so most of it is like the people that I love. Um, there's a huge part of it that is about chocolate cake, um, a huge part. I mean, I literally have a slice of chocolate cake every single day. I will show you my credit card She's receipt. Lying because you haven't seen her biceps, which are so chiseled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I promise you, I will show you my credit card <laughs> receipts. I buy a slice. I buy two slices of cake every two days, so I don't have to buy it every day. I'm telling you guys, she's lying, or she's she's. How do I prove this to you? I will tell you. I get it from Birdsong Cafe. I even know Atlanta. that. <laughs> and you can speak to them. Yeah. No, but really, like with those with those arms and with that with that flat tummy, I I really don't know how we're doing. Piece <laughs> of slice of cake every single day. But this was incredible. Wish you all the very best with this book. The illustrations look fab. Uh, the book is gorgeous. It's very simply written. um so wish you all the best and and looking forward to the next one thank you so much manji it was lots of fun